Chapter 25, Ayin Beis, Volume 1, Discourse 6, page 38, Lamed Ches. Rebbe Rashab is in the middle of a discussion explaining, using an example of letters of a word to understand the process of how from a more nebulous ethereal state, namely the ten hidden spheres before the tzimtzum, which are really only the way the divine, the source envisions reality. So it's all in a very state in a state that is completely, as you say, pshitas mamish, absolute formlessness. But yet there's something happening, the process has begun. How from that emerges ten distinct spheres on the energy level? So the example he's been using it began in chapter twenty-three was letters and a word. A word, take the word baruch. So baruch has itself entire volumes of meaning, the word baruch blessing. Literal meaning, deeper meaning, spiritual meaning in all the worlds. Then you have to teach it to a child. You can't teach the word Baruch. You have to begin with the letter base of Baruch. So it's the same letter base in the word Baruch, but it's in very diminished form. It's in a very limited form, meaning that the base is separate from the entire word, meaning that the concept is not yet radiating. It's all concealed, almost all concealed. And that's an example of how the ten hidden spheres before the symptoms is like the word Baruch. Everything's together there. You have a uh, the connection, the meaning, the letters are connected, the word has a meaning, has many levels of meaning, and so on. The whole context is there. The symptoms conceal the context. You have now a letter it's a letter of a word, so it's not like some false reality. But you only see a base. Now take that all the way to the furthest extreme and you end up with our physical world. You see trees and birds and sky and earth, people, all disjointed. The truth is it's all letters of a big story. We are all letters of a big, of words that are words of a bigger story. We don't see the story. But here we're not talking about Elam Haza, physical fragmentation. We're talking about the spheres from before the symptom and after the symptom. In chapter 24, he has the question to elaborate on this. As you could argue that this makes very much sense according to the opinion, the Padis, that the hidden ten hidden spheres is the root of the containers. The containers being letters. So before the tzimtzum, the containers are fully cognizant and aware of the context. After the tzimtzum, take away the idea, the concept, and the letters are just empty shells. Beis, Reis, Vav, Chof, Alu, Beis, Gimel, Dal. Yes, they carry and contain in them uh, a distant memory of something that was once there, but now all you're seeing is our empty containers. But he said that's not the, the position that this Hemshech, this discourse is taking. And this discourse is discussing it. That the ten hidden spheres are not just roots of the container. They're not roots of the container. They're roots of the energy. So the question is, once the energy is gone, once the seichel is gone from borough, the meaning of blessing, what is left? If it's all energy. So... So he explains that within energy, there's two levels. There's outer energy and inner energy. So before the symptom, the inner meaning of Baruch, so to speak, was there. But the outer, something remains on the outer level, even on energy level. And the second explanation he gave is that the, what remains are the shames, the names. He introduces the concept of names without elaborating so much, but basically there's energy, there are containers, and there's names that connect energy and container. So what happens is, 
Weil bei der Zimtzum, mit der Evia Schlemm, bei der Zimtzum. Name is a combination of letters. Names are made of letters. With Kebofke. And these names. Is what remained. As he says, the last line of the last chapter. When all the names are together, because there's the different levels of all the divine names, they radiate a higher energy. And by separating them through the Tzimtzum, the, the energy is diminished. So here you have another way of explaining what happens according to the opinion that the, the hidden spheres is the root of the energies. What happens using that example, when so-called is a diminishing of the energy. So what remains are the distinct names. Now, as I explained, the critical point, why, why you have to go this way? Why not just simplify it and say that it's the root of the containers and that's it? And you have an example, letters and words. Before the symptoms, the containers are all about containing the message of Baruch, the letters are not just letters. They're letters that simply convey a message called Baruch, a blessing, or whatever message they convey. And after the Simpson, you only have the letters, the containers. Because here he wants to explain that the, the definition of existence and the defining elements of our individuality and our personalities are not just uh, reaching to the root of the containers, that in the energy itself, in transcendence itself, that reflects the divine, there's also some element of parameters or some personality that connects to the individuality of the actual spheres. The, the anyway. Is, can I ask you a question? Yeah. The letter base is more than just for us. Did I hear you say the base is, is for us? Baruch has, it's an example used in that chapter. I'm talking about an example in this chapter. Days of Baruch. There's a letter from the word Baruch. In the term of Baruch, uh, the whole Baruch is contained in the base. The no, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. I said that Baruch is a full word, four letters. Base is one letter in that word. Base, yes, when it's part of the word Baruch, it's connected to the whole meaning of Baruch. But when you teach it to a child, you only teach the base itself. You don't have the, 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 the seichel. The idea within the word Baruch is concealed when the child is only learning one letter. But the this book tends to that eventually the base can be part of Baruch, and is when you're just learning the base, it's hidden. And it's a, and the base is the beginning of many words. That's that's my question. It's not relevant. So what? It's just an example. The same example could be the word gracious. The word. Uh, Absolutely, bias, same mm -hmm. idea. Okay, so now we continue chapter 25 on page to Amat Chas 38. Ach, ya shleimer. However, we one can say the Kamoya Moshlahana. Like the example, the above example, but is Bayes Metevis Baruch. The letter Bayes from the word Baruch. However, we can say that similar to the example we gave of the Bayes of Baruch, we can, maybe we can explain this. With another example that's similar to this. The Yubam Bazaar, Ech Shabi Sardus Kulam Yeshbam Er Elim. The Rebbe Rashab clearly is not satisfied with the previous chapter, with, with according to the explanation that the ten hidden spheres are energy, it's all energy. So yes, before the Simpson, before there's the concealment, when all the letters are combined, there's a higher form of energy. 
And when the letters are separated, or there's the concealment, there's a diminished state of energy, meaning a diminished, in the muscle, it means that the concept is diminished. You don't really see it. So he's saying that we can understand it with, a, a similar, with another example, similar. And with this, we'll understand and with this, we'll understand meaning it seems that with this, we'll understand how when they're all united, meaning before the symptom, the ten hidden spheres, they have within them a higher energy. We'll understand this as we go along. For who and this is his new example that he's going to bring now. Now, for example, called Inyan Sikhri, every Inyan Sikhri, every intelligent concept, every concept, every idea, it has within it many elements, many details, many aspects. With with which we understand this inya seichel. In other words, inya seichel is never a one statement idea. Every idea, every concept has in it a whole bunch of ideas, a bunch of elements. And that is that the seichel, what the seichel, the intelligent idea, divides and separates into many details. Well, commotion is part of the El Peri Dal, as we explained, as it was explained earlier, chapter four. She efsher the inyan sichel shleiye be prata. That's impossible for a concept, an intelligent concept, that should not have details. She bekol el ha prata mubna sechel. And it's with all these details that you understand the sechel. Every sechel has details. The nature of sechel is that it's made up of parts, components. That's what how Seichel works. It's piecing together pieces, ideas. And within these details, there are details that are primim that are more internal. That's literally what it means. But primim yeser means more fundamental, probably. They're deeper. It doesn't say, I'm looking primim yeser. The more vital is probably what he wants to say than other details that are more external, more peripheral, peripheral. I want to see how the example plays itself out, but it could be more fundamental and more peripheral, more so-called secondary. He calls it primis chitzenius right now, which is very similar to what he said before in the previous chapter, primis chitzenius air. Okay. Now, in the transmission of intelligence, of ideas from the mashpia, from the transmitter, the teacher, Ella Makabal, to the recipient, it's impossible. It cannot possible. Lashpia to, to transmit to him. All the details together. Hey, mitzah the mashpia, it's, 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 it's not possible. Both from the perspective of the mashpia, of the giver, the transmitter. It's, it's not possible they should, that all should be transmitted together, all the details. The hey, mitzah the makabal, and also from the perspective of the recipient. Because he cannot receive everything together. In other words, this aspect, this limit, that idea has to be conveyed step by step, piecemeal, instead of all together, is both from the perspective of the teacher and the transmitter and from the recipient. The recipient can't receive it all together. And, it, and the teacher has to also organize it and in a flow that, 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 that's also not all flowing out all together. Ki mashpilai kol Rather, he transmits to him every detail separately, to the point where all the details are transmitted. 
So when you speak about any subject matter, a good teacher is going to build a case. One detail, another detail, another detail. And when you go away, you have the whole picture. So this is in a structured flow. Okay. Now, from the perspective of the mashpia, the, the transmitter, who had all these details in his seichel, because he already worked it through. He received the details from, let's say, his teacher, or he developed it. From that perspective, he already knows the Indian sikhli, the concept, the intelligent concept that is derived from these details. But the perspective of the recipient, who, who whom is known only one detail or two of them, had any idea that in the Indian sikhli. He doesn't yet know the concept. So you see, it's a similarity to the previous example, but he's going to show it a very distinct difference. Like the base, when you teach the base to a child, the student, the teacher knows this base is part of a word baruch, which is part of a whole meaning, many levels of meanings. Here too, a teacher must convey, not just from the student's perspective, also from his perspective, step by step, piecemeal. Yet, because he had the idea ready before, prior to his transmitting it, worked out. So he has the whole picture. The recipient, on the other, only knows what he's hearing. And meanwhile, he's hearing one piece, two pieces. So he doesn't yet know the, the, the full sech. And nevertheless, on the other hand, in every detail, every detail comprised, is, is contained a part of the seichel, a part of the idea. Every detail has in it part of the seichel that's within the seichel, the intelligence of the teacher, the transmitter. Besides, for the seichel intelligence of this specific detail. So right now what we have is like this, the details of a subject matter. From the recipient's point of view, he does not yet know the whole picture like the teacher does. Yet, there are two things that are going on. First of all, this piece has seichel on its own, but it also has also a part of the seichel of the whole picture even though the recipient doesn't yet know it. Because it's a piece of that puzzle. I mean, the example would be, let's say, you know, you look at something, before you see the whole thing, you see pieces. That piece is part of the whole thing. Without that detail, you wouldn't understand the whole seichel as well. The ha besides the fact that the piece itself has seichel. In other words, if the transmitter stopped teaching right now, you'd still have something. But you wouldn't have the whole picture. You just have a, a, a short piece of seich, like a short or a, a contained, a contained concept. The hari inyan haprati, who inyan sichli, prati. Because this detail, this inyan prati that the that the student is receiving, when you sichli prati, it's a detailed concept. It's a detailed aspect of a concept. And from all the details together, you can understand the concept. And that's the, etzems, the, the, the essence of the seichel that we're dealing with that is understood from all the details. So we have here basically saying that it is the details that make up the, the bigger seichel. So without the details, you're not going to have that seichel. So each part of the, seichel, the details has part of the seichel. In other words, if you said the seichel was in one place, you had a concept, and you're using details that are examples, let's say, mishala, then you could say that examples are not a fundamental part of the concept. But as he explained, a concept has to have details. There's no way a concept can a concept in this world 
cannot be conveyed without details. Just to give you a con by contrast, for example, there are things that are not transmitted through detail. For example, light, sunlight. So even though, yes, the sunlight does come in a measured way, in a limited way, but it doesn't cons it's not reckoning itself with the containers. When the sun shines on earth, it doesn't care if it's a garbage pile, a house, a palace, a tree, the ground, waste, or not. Because the sunlight sun, sun just emerged. I'm just giving it as an example. So though it's true, the sunlight itself has details. It's made up of particles and so on. But as far as you can't say, you can say, generally, it's just a ray of light that's shining. When it comes to seichel, seichel means comprehension. You're not talking about it. Or let's say will. Someone desires something. I desire now to eat. Or I desire to take a walk. So yes, the eating and the walk is a detail, but the desire aspect doesn't really care how I get it. You don't need to understand. You don't need to break down a desire into pieces because there's no comprehension necessarily. It's just a desire. Seichel by nature is a comprehensive, it's comprehending something. Comprehension means the way God created the structure of existence is comprehension requires details. There's no way to comprehend something without details. You can look at a big, beautiful painting the Chassidus sometimes explains the difference between sight and sound. In sight, you can look at a beautiful painting and not comprehend anything, just take in the beauty. If someone says to you, what did you see? You know, you're going to have to go and recollect the details. But you don't see the details. You see the image. And you may not even be able to remember the details. When you hear something, there's no other way but to build it piece, piece by piece because you can't hear an entire story in one shot. Just the way the transmission of ideas. So the person who's speaking is the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, the end of the story. It's made up of words. So, for example, before we said Baruch, that's where it's in the, it's, it's the, the letters convey a word. There's no way to convey a concept without details. Here, he's not talking letters and a word. He's, he's raised it to another level. As you see, this, as you can see, we'll see, this is more the energy level of things. So here, that's not, it's not containers and energy, it's details and overall seichel, and the overall concept. When you study geometry, for example, so in the beginning you learn certain basic principles, then you start learning the theorems, and each theorem has its cor cor corollaries, and so on, and postulates, and so on. Then, after you get to many theorems, you start realizing what geometry is. Every system is like that. That's what school is about, education. You can't learn it all. You learn it step by step by step. So bottom line is, each plot is fundamental to the seichel. So the seichel does, is not anything but a, summation, a sum of all the of details. You could say it the other way around. The seichel is an idea. But for that idea to be comprehended, it has to be broken details. And those details make up a big picture. So every one of these details is in your seichel. And together, the essence of the seichel, which is beyond the details, is then understood when you have them all. Where does Hakma fit into this? Where I got it in one instant without any details. Hakma could be like Ria, like seeing something. So you just compared the a, a big scene as, as a seichel, which needs, you can't. I, I compared seeing not the seichel. I compare seeing to Shmir is to say, seeing you just see, there's no details. Chachma, there's no details. But it's not really, it's not going to Chachma, is uh, generally speaking, it's just one spark. But for all practical purposes, Chachma is the beginning of Seichel too. If you really that's dissect question. it. That's my question. Yeah, but it's not relevant here, it's not mentioned it, so why are we bringing it in? Is there something missing in what no, we're learning I mean, now? Just... Are you trying to connect it to things you learned before? Yes. Yeah, I understand. But Let's learn what he says here. It's complicated enough. And then you make connections. That would be my advice. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you're going to be going off to other paths. And every detail on its own. Going back to what he said before. Besides the specific seichel of this detail. Besides for the specific seichel of this detail. Let's say the theorem in, in geometry. It's one theorem. That theorem itself has seichel. The seichel 2 plus 2 equals 4. 
that has intelligence in it. It doesn't have the intelligence of the whole series of mathematics of what numbers are and what infinity is and all that, but it has. So besides the specific seichel, his own seichel, that specific union, it also has a part of the overall seichel of the entire concept that will be understood from all the details. You know, every 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 nuance here is relevant to the whole muscle and nimshal. So he's elaborating, he's breaking it down to mamish into unbelievable detail. However, it's in a diminished form, it's miut. It's in a diminished form compared to how it is in the seichel, in the concept, the way it's inside of the mashbiyat. So we have a lot of pieces going on here. A seichel is made up of details. It can only be transmitted and received through details. The detail has its own seichel, plus it has the seichel of the whole picture. But it's in a diminished form because the recipient is only hearing this detail right now. Whereas in the seichel of the mashpia, of the teacher, he knows how this detail is part of the entire picture. And this diminished state, meaning the diminished state of how in this detail of a general concept, you have a part, you, you have within it the intelligence of the general concept, but in diminished state, this diminished state can be in two different ways. One way is that the recipient doesn't know and doesn't understand at all yet, doesn't yet know or understand at all. The yet is obvious because he will one day. The essence of the seichel, of the intelligence that comes from these details. He doesn't know at all. And nevertheless, even though the recipient doesn't know this, the, the whole picture, Nevertheless, there's a part of that whole in this detail. That's one way. So it's clearly diminished because he has no idea of where this is going. He has no idea of the bigger picture. Yet, the fact is, this aspect of it, if you ask the teacher, the teacher will tell you immediately, this aspect is step one in, in 45 steps. And once you finish the 45 steps, you'll have a very powerful picture. And he sees that picture. That's one way. A second way, which is not as intense, diminishing. Or the second way that is diminished, that even the recipient also understands the essence of the seichel. However, it's diminished. It's much less than, the, than, than it is compared to the knowledge of the mashpia. So in other words, he's, he's getting a sense of a bigger picture. He already has it, but it's diminished because he doesn't quite have it the way the teacher has it. Why is that? Because, because, he, because of, he doesn't know the, the details. And it's the other details that are the ones that bring to the essence of the, of, the, of the concept. So you could say that even though he's not there yet, he has a sense and has a, some type of understanding of the big picture, but, but he doesn't have those details yet like the teacher does, and therefore he doesn't quite understand it like the teacher does, the whole picture. And that's why. The mashpia, the transmitter who already knows all the details. He knows very clearly and crystallized the idea that will that is derived from all these details. And another thing, besides that he knows it's crystal clear, that comes all the details, for him it radiates. The general concept, the general seichel, the, comprehens the comprehension of the idea. It radiates in him 
in a comprehensive and in, in a comprehension and understandable way from all the details in a very revealed way in every detail and detail. In other words, he has the whole concept and every detail is very clear the part of that whole concept. In contrast, the Makabal, the recipient, because he does not yet know the Seichel, the general Seichel, Rak Mitzas Memeno, like in the second way that he explains it. Only a bit, of, only a part of it. Only a small part, Mitzas. Only a, only a part of it. Mukom Mokem has a slave of his mir ta'ir. I'm sorry, not Mukom, a mela. The mela, and therefore, has that slave of his mir ta'ir. And inevitably, it's in, by him in a form of diminished energy. Diminished light, diminished intelligence, basically. Vahainu, and that is Shayidiyose by Etzma Sikhli Bukhalusi Uba Mirat. And that is that his knowledge, according to the talk, but the second I think the second way he's explaining the diminishing. That his knowledge, understanding of the from the of the essential seikhl, of the idea of Bukhalusi in general, Uba Mirat, is in a diminished form. The gamma, Masha Bechol Prat, Yedea Setz Masich Lishabo, Mizer. Okay, okay, the Sechel in general is Bemid. The gamma, Masha Bechol Prat, Yedea Setz Masich Lishabo, Mizer, Ukhin Smithe. There's a second element of diminishing. That also, every detail that through which you know the general central idea that comes from it, Shabom is that, that comes from the details, is in a diminished form, is in a diminished energy level. And these two are interdependent. He adds in the parentheses. Okay. So what we're saying here is the following. To sum it up. Number one. The diminishing, the, 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 the diminished state of intelligence by the recipient is in two, two, one of two ways. One is he doesn't know at all about the essential seichel, and all he knows is this piece that he's been taught. But because this piece is part of and will build up, and the, the general essential idea requires this piece, like it requires all other pieces, therefore there's something there, but it's very diminished. Or not to that extent, he does know the general picture of the concept. But he doesn't know it the way the teacher knows it. Because firstly, he has not yet received all the details. Not first, I'm sorry. Because he hasn't yet received all the details. So overall, he knows there's a picture, but he doesn't know it the way the teacher. The teacher knows the whole picture and knows how every detail is part of that concept. Like I said, would say, let's say, you're learning, um, I mentioned geometry, but any system, so you, every system has its rules, especially in the beginning, you start learning that there's certain fundamental principles. So when you start learning the fundamental principles, let's say mathematics, or the Havel for that matter, Kholi uh, Ha how the Tater works. Let's say you learn the concept of a Kalb You know, we have the, in the morning, we say, you give me the Shatayim, the Rosh Hashanah, there's 13 ways the Torah is interpreted. 13 methods. Okay, and the first time you learn it, you learn one at a time. Kalvachemer. What's Kalvachemer? Kalvachemer is that you can derive from a, if you have such so a similarity of two situations where, uh, where one is more severe and one is more lenient. So even though something is not said in the severe, it's something that, let's say, Yom Kippur is more powerful than Shabbos. But if there's, you know that Yom Kippur, Shabbos, Shabbos, 
which is a double Shabbos. So even though some things are prohibited, are, that are prohibited in Kippur are not stated by Yom Kippur, they're only stated by Shabbos, you can derive Kal V'chema, that if Kal, if Shabbos, this is not allowed, so definitely Yom Kippur it's not allowed. It's okay, it's a, just to give you an example. There's many hundreds of examples. So Kal V'chema, it's a method. And you learn this method is used with certain conditions, etc., etc., of how you derive halachas that may not be laws that are not specifically stated. Another one is Gzeir Shav. Two similar situations. Again, has conditions, certain similarities. One, you can derive one from there. Now you have a whole bunch of 13 different things. So when you're a beginner student and you're learning one of these, it has a seich limit. There's a lot of intelligence in Kabbalah. There's reasons. Why. It's a logical system. But you don't know yet know so-called the whole process of, let's say, what a poisik. A, true, a rabbi that has the credentials and has the smich and the shimush and everything necessary, experience, ordination experience. So he knows how to use all the different tools because he knows the picture. So when you're starting to learn it, you're just learning it as a beginner. So the kavachem, you, the way you understand kavachem, the way the, 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 the novice understands it, the way the experienced expert understands it, is very different. Number one is, first of all, you understand the seichel less than he does because he knows it as part of the whole picture and therefore has a much better understanding. But above all, the most important part is that even if you know that this is a piece in a puzzle of 13 methods and many more other elements that are necessary in how you use them, you don't know all the details, so you don't really get the whole seichel yet. It's in a diminished state. The seichel b'chlal, that's what he's saying here, b'mir, and also what needs detail because all these details remember the other side of it is that even the scholar also doesn't just know a big picture he once learned it piece by piece too to know Torah in general the Torah methodology you have to go and so on and so on etc etc you need to but once you get the picture and you have it it came from all the details, but now there's something that you know. It, each detail is part of it. And this person who only is learning one detail, the student, so to speak. It's in a diminished state because he only sees this seichel itself and not recognizes how it's part of a whole concept. And the parenthesis, yeah, it's interdependent. What does that mean? Because... He doesn't know the whole seichel. The whole, the whole seichel by him is diminished. That's why also how this detail reflects on the big seichel is also diminished. But even with all this, the end of the day is, Kalvachem is part of the, in this example, is part of the whole concept of Torah methodology. I mean, this is, you could apply it to anything. Learning Hilcha Shabbos. You learn the laws of Shabbos. So you look at Shulchan Aruch, Rambam, Rambam, Shulchan Aruch, and it begins with certain rules, certain quality. You know, the 30, 39 malachas you're not allowed to do. The 39 malachas we derive from the, the Mishkan, the, the work that was done in the Mishkan. We all know that in these malachas there's going to be, there's a, a, a voice and there's, a, the, there's obvious, there's total, there's, there's all kinds of levels, sub, sub, qual, subcategories and sub, subcategories. You haven't begun learning at all, but you know there's a picture, you know Shabbos is a day, but there's a lot of things that you're not allowed to do. There's a lot of things you're supposed to do. If you haven't learned the halach of Shabbos, yes, in this, one of the malachas you learned, you know that you know it, but to say that you know it the way that someone knows the whole thing, yeah, you could say, I know this malacha well, but you don't know what Shabbos is really about until you get the whole concept. And this is all predicated on what he said before, that every seichel is, is critical, is is. A, 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 a critical component, an element in Seichel that is made up of details. As I mentioned, there are things that don't need details. You could just have a transmission of a light. But when you talk about Seichel, Seichel by definition means comprehension, and comprehension means details. There's no way to comprehend something without breaking it into details. To just say, I heard something, like, you know, uh, uh, for, for three hours and not, not know the details, you haven't comprehended. You may have heard it. You may have been impressed by it. It may have affected you. But comprehension, by definition, means absorbing details. But it's not the de it's the details that make up the whole seichel. 
But then once you have all the details, there's something of obviously in the seichel that's deeper than just what the details, each detail has contains. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, these details are not peripheral. Like I said before, if you gave an example, let's say, to uh, one of the Lama Tess Malachas, or I gave an example to Kal Chemelak, I just gave an example. The example is not necessarily part of the seichel. That's an example that you could give or not give to understand it. But the detail itself, there's no way you're going to know you'd give a midrash, a the 13 midrash, the 13 methods the Torah interpret without knowing each one of them. You can't just say, you know, actually there's also what you call it, and bechal or mashal b'frat. It's also part of it. In other words, so there's a klal, but the klal is made up of prata. So to say, you know, there's a, that you just know the klal, you don't know the prata, that doesn't... So the protein are a part of the picture. The question, how much, the only question is how much do you know and recognize as part of the picture? That would be like somebody, let's say someone showing you unveiling a beautiful painting, but they unveil it piece by piece, you know, just a little. So you see a piece, so your seichel tells you, look, I see there's much more, but I don't know what it is yet. So it doesn't mean that you don't see this piece. This piece is part of it. But to say that you, that you, that this piece is absolutely part of the whole painting, and the one who painted it knows exactly where it's leading. It's only from the gavra, so to speak. The chefza is complete. The gavra, meaning the human being, the perspective of the observer, you only know right now this prat. So you know a prat that's part of a whole picture, but you're only seeing and appreciating and, rec- and comprehending that which was shown to you. Do you see how similar this is to the example before with Baruch, with the letters? It's like the letters of a word, but the difference is the letters, there's no comprehension. That's what is really, this real Moshe adds. A Bez, without knowing that it's part of Baruch, without the explanation, Baruch means blessing. But Bez is not one quarter of a blessing, even though it's only one quarter of the four letters. Bez doesn't have an, any, any element of blessing. Yeah, Rosh Tevis. not talking about that. But it's one letter. Here, we're talking about the seichel has the seichel already in it, and it's part of the seichel of the whole seichel. So it's similar to the example, except it has more energy in it than, than letters do. That's the distinction. But he's going to, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's finish this uh, here. Okay. So, now, man, this is a dissection. Behine now, all the details come together. When all the details you arrive, all the details arrive, or you arrive to them. He's adding now another thing. Though that the makabal, the recipient, the student that is, then knows the inyan sikhli, meaning the full concept. Who made us like in ba'aprotim. Remember, there's two things here. He knows the, the general the seichel and also radiates each detail in the details. He sees how each detail is part of that general seichel, like the teacher. In other words, what he's going now is another step. Till now, he was talking about the student before he's reached the end of the story. He's being taught piecemeal, piece, piece, piece. So we learn what the pieces are. So in the piece, he understands the piece, but it's in a diminished state compared to the overall seichel. And in each detail that he understands, he doesn't yet see the whole seichel. But now let's talk about he's now arrived. He's been taught all Yud Gimel Midas, for example. Or he's arrived to, 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 to all the details. He's saying even then, there's a, there's a Hefresh God, there's a big difference. how it is by the Makabal compared to how it was by the teacher before he began to transmit it. Now, obviously, he's talking about a student who's still a student. We're not talking about a student who's chushim, who's already reached the level of a teacher. He's talking here, like, you know, the day you graduate, so to speak. The day that you finished the course on the, on the let's say, the Lama Tess Malachas, or the Yudh Gimam I mean, clearly, he's just talking about that. It's all relevant, as I said. This is all the Moshe. It's all going to be relevant and interesting. So he, gives, he says, well, he explains now why. Because from the perspective of the Mashpia, by the Mashpia that they were transmitted, the teacher, 
All the details were in a dacus, refined, subtle, ethereal. Dacus varuchus. They were in a form of subtlety. Dacus subtle, very gentle, but dacus also ethereal. Varuchnis and very varuchnis uh, um, is more ethereal. Dac, subtle, gentle. Refined. Yeah, refined. We said that mizuchach is refined, really, but it's. I mean, you get the idea. The bottom line is, it's not. What you're focusing on is the idea more than the specific details. It's, let's put it this way. When you learn about Yud Gimel Midas, at the end of the day, yes, each of the Midas, each one of the methods. Dakis is like the spirit of the world, it's not like the world itself. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the reason. Yeah, 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 but Ruchnis is then spirit. Yes. Okay. It's, 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 well, no, I'm going to explain how. Uh, when you learn, let's say, the 13 uh, principles, or the 39 Malachas, I'm just using examples, or the or the, 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 the theorems in geometry. When a person who's really come to, uh, an expert, who studied it all his life, he's the, we're talking about the teacher now, and knows it well, there's something that he knows even in the details. If you were to sit with the student, there's something you can't compare. Because for him, he's, he's come to a point that it's more than just the sum of the parts. It's not just a bunch of pieces. You see this sometimes. You see sometimes people who are book smart, they know it, and, and they know the facts, but they can't quite communicate it the way someone who's doing it for a long time or has had a lot more experience. Because he's, there's, a, there's a subtle element, an invisible element called the spirit of the law. There's some type of uh, <clears throat> a subtle element that, that is emerges. And you can tell this very often. You see people who just don't have the experience. So they're right. Like, you know, what they're saying is correct technically, but it's lacking an edelkeit, a certain refinement and a certain Weird. subtlety in the, in the clarity of the picture. And this, I, I, I give you an example. When I remember writing the Rebbe Sichus, so early on, you know, we'd write something, and the Rebbe would edit. And I saw right away that his edits were like almost natural. At some point, I just became second nature by me. Because you saw that it was like an appreciation of, first of all, the power of words, but also how things are conveyed. I'll give you an example. So what do you mean, it became second nature by me? Like what you're saying, over the years, as I saw the edits, I, I learned from the Rebbe's edits. He picked up the spirit of his approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a spirit. It's, 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 more, it's much more. It's a method. It's a method. It's not just what the words are. It's how they're conveyed. Like sometimes we're the specific. I'll give you an example. A novice thinks you have to spell everything out. As you get more experience, you realize that some things should remain uh, ambiguous yeah. and vague. Intentionally. I could show you places the Rebbe literally where I tried to spell it out and made it back into vague. Mm-hmm. So you think, okay, no, what, what, what can we have clarity? Because that's how it works. So certain things are, ma- are, are meant to be left mm-hmm. more for interpretation. But you're going to say, one sec, why is that? That sounds, you know, ambiguity just creates confusion. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's experience. Doesn't, you don't go too far. We're not talking about ambiguity to the point where you can't figure it out. Mm-hmm. We're talking about enough. To, for, for, it's, it's also how you teach. It's, 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 it's methods that you learn with experience that are far more, they almost cannot really quantify that in words. You could teach it to someone, but it takes time. It's not just learning, you know, you can memorize that there are 39 malachas. But then there's a certain element of, that's just common sense, it's an element of the spirit of the law that is required in really appreciating it. Anyway, bottom line is he's saying here is, now he's going to the next level. <laughs> Havshat is usually defined as abstract. The word Havshat comes from the word halbosha, it means to dress something up. Havshat means to undress it. In Seichel, it means a Seichel, when you're talking about, there were, for example, two types of brilliance. There were teachers that were very good malbisha, they were halbosha. They knew how to explain something in so many garments, like when you say, examples, examples, examples. They would dress an idea that may have been a very profound idea in garments that you can relate to. But then there's another depth which goes the other way. Someone who's able to undress an idea from its so-called outer expression and application to get to the core abstraction of the concept. But Raghachavar is a classic example of the latter. He would take halachas, and you wouldn't believe how he could find two common denominators between two halachas that have nothing to do with each other. Hilchus Shabbos and Hilchus Kedushin. Because he would abstract the concept into a theory Mm-hmm. Of, of the rules, let's say, of, of, of Klal and Prat, or Pulnam Shechis. Yeah. You know, rules. Huh? Can't compare. 
Yeah, for example. Yeah, but you underestimate the idea behind it. It boils down well, to that. So, so as Hashem is talking about Shama and Hila, besides Kavur and Chesed, there's also that Shama is usually goes according to Kayach, potential. Let's say Tuba Shvat is not is Rosh Chedesh Shvat because the potential. Or Chanukah, you start light right away because the first day has the potential. You, as the potential is actualized, so you, so you light eight, and you go. The, and Hila goes according to actual. So Tuba Shvat is when the actual begins to sprout. So Shvat is when it begins to germinate. Uh, the point is. Now, once you do that, you begin to find similarities between all of them. But I'm going even further than that. Sometimes things are completely, you would never have a connection between them. Here at least Shama and Hillel, that, that's, that's the common denominator. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have ideas. The point I'm making here is that you can, there's, there's really two different strengths. One is explaining something in, in, in dressing it. Hafshata means undressing it. In this case, obviously, it means getting to the abstract. That's what we call Bechinus Hafshata. So it's what's happening here is that you begin with the details. As the details come together, you begin to understand a bigger picture. When you come to understand the bigger picture, you understand each detail, how it's part of the picture. Mm -hmm. But then there's something which is going to call some point, era, era al kolona. I didn't want to use the word for, for the Rebbe Rashab uses it, synergy. There's something that's more than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. In this case, there's a, some type of abstraction, some type of um, hovering power that you see that a master has that, that a student just doesn't have, even if the student knows all the facts. Yeah, 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 it's exactly. It's, it's, or, or by the story of Gemara, in Saita, where it talks about this, the, we'll talk about the Miraglim, the calculations, that two people can lift more than double the weight of one. So it's like the most physical example. You can lift 100 pounds, I can lift 100 pounds. I mean, he's going to talk about it. Let's go there later, but... Uh, so together we can lift. I, we can lift more than two, uh, 200 pounds. How is that possible? Two hundred in the middle inch. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly. Right, exactly. And it exponentially grows based on how many people. So in other words, that's why a group, a minion, as you mentioned, or a hundred, isn't just quanti quantitative growth. It's qualitative, mm -hmm. and it's different levels. That's why you expect different brachas, different type of level. Because once you have a bigger number, it changes. Not just it's not the sum of the parts. It's not just a bunch of details. But regarding to Seichel, it's pretty clear. You see an expert. I mean, this is you see all the time. You, come, you go to an expert on a subject. What they have is not just more facts and more details. They have a, a, a subtle appreciation of something that's very difficult to quantify. Now, you can learn it, but it takes time. Because just like this teacher learned it. I mean, there's so many examples for it. It's anything where you get with experience, you know. Like uh, sometimes I talk to Bochum and they say, yeah, yeah. I say, you know, this expression, ain't chachem kabal musay. It's known as wise as the person who's been in those experiments. So someone says to me, yeah, I learned that. that, that, that. I know that too. <laughs> so he, he thinks he has experience because he knows that statement. No, that's not the same thing. What do they say? They say when a man with money meets a man with experience, the man yeah. with experience ends up with the money, and the man with the money ends up with the experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's a like a <laughs> now, if it happens to you too many times, you probably should change <laughs> the line of work. Now, my point is, what is experience? It's very hard to... Someone says experience is the thing you get when you don't get what you want. You know, because you, you learn from it. So it, it's very difficult to explain these things. It happens with life, you know, as you go along. Go, I, I, you know, I counsel people, young couples. Go explain to them what marriage is like when you're 30 years married. You know, it's, it's not the same thing. It's not like 30 years times the first year. It's a different world. You know, it's a different world. And especially once you have children and grandchildren, it, it can't explain life to somebody unless you went there. I mean, I'm not saying that's exactly because he's not really using the soy in here example. He's just trying to point out of something that's added that's more than just knowing the facts. Knowing the facts is not the whole picture, by the way. So let's continue here. I'll shut up. Okay, Mayor, it's the Daku Sa'inim. And that's why he's adding now a whole new thing. And that's why by the teacher, by the mashpia, by the transmitter, mashpia is more the transmitter than the teacher, actually. Malamad is a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mashpia. Yeah. Is, that's why what radiates by him, the subtlety of the Indian and the energy of it, I'm sorry, the subtlety of the Indian, and a, and a uh, intense... We can say a uh, increased, amplified. Erav, Rav is 
Usually the kamos and echos, it can be powerful, it can be intense. A rav, la protein, in the details. Mashenk and gabe makabo, by contrast, however, by the makabo, by the recipient, shaprotin must say bechinus al bosha. He doesn't use half shot in the By him, the details are the They're belavushi asoga. They're manifest in the garments of the concept that you're uh, the understand, comprehend. Al kein gam kishim akabel kol aprotim, and that's why. Ah, okay. We're going to go to that. I'll explain this in a minute. That's why. Also, when he receives all the details, even all the details, he has them all. When made at sleiyin behem. And it radiates for him, the Indian. He understands the whole picture. We're not talking about earlier, the stages where he was just hearing details. We're talking about he's heard all the details and, he's, and, and, the, and the big concept, the big picture is radiating and, and reflected in all the details. It's not the same form of subtlety and with the same intensity or the same amount and measure or volume of of er. Kolkach as much, so much, as much as this as the teacher. So he added now one thing that, that was not said before, and that is the Alboshi. So he's explaining a step further. Huh? We're gonna get to that in a second. One second. In other words, what he's saying is because it goes like this. What's the difference between the teacher and the student? They both know all the details. They both know the big picture. The big picture is 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 informing the small picture, meaning all the details. What's the difference? The difference is because the teacher began. In other words, the teacher is no longer a, a student. He was once a student, but he, with his years of absorbing and processing it, has come to a point where he was able to separate or so-called abstract the details and get to the essential concept. The student, on the other hand, is a beginner. He just received the details by, through explanation. So you can't expect him to suddenly be in a place where this teacher is in this, in this so-called uh, very pure pristine place of the idea, because he's just, he's going mamatla maila, basically. The teacher is going mamatla maila. The teacher is coming from inside his own system, meaning his own mind and his own inner kishkas, and turning it into something the student, piece by piece, piecemeal. The, te the student is the other way around. The student has been going detail, 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 and now he's gotten the pictures. But his details are based on halbasha, based on explanation, not based on now, if he continues going, he'll, he can become like the teacher, but we're not talking about that stage. We're talking about the stage where there's a teacher and a student, and there's one is clearly superior to the other. Now he continues. The teacher starts up with the whole picture, and he breaks it down to bite sizes. The student is getting it bite size, bite size. And even when he gets the picture, it's still made up of bite size. It doesn't have the shot of the able kite. Yeah, exactly. You'll have to get there one day, I'm sure, right? Well, that's for sure. That's the carbon. Just like the teacher got there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Kabbalah. Right. We'll get to that. But first, you have to know how you're different before you get, like the Alta Rebbe says, first you have to know how small you are before you get to how great you can become. Now he says the Kabbalah here, the intention here is not, he's not talking about the depth and the internal primis and the inner dimensions of the idea. We're not talking about that. That's for sure. The teacher is great. Ki'im, what are we are? What are we talking about? Rather, we're talking about Allah Seichel Hamusug Muvim Be'Ein She'etz La Mashpia Meir Ba'Protim Li Be'Er Gili Ubi Ili Amadregu Resmukav Ener Be'Li Be'Gili. He's not talking about the depth of the concept itself. We're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, He's adding another dimension, and I know why. All this is relevant to the Moshe of the Nimshah, obviously. He's not talking now about the fact that the teacher happens to be brighter and, and, and deeper and, and understands it deeper. He's talking about how its relationship is with the details. That's really what he's saying here. Allah sechel muskum mu'un ba'inyan, she'it samashpia me'er ba'aprotin. We're talking about how the sechel affects and informs the details. So by the teacher, it's made by Pratim Ribe Eru Bi Ili Hamadregis. By the teacher, the overall concept radiates and informs the details with intense or great, a lot of energy, a lot of seichel, Bi Ili Hamadregis. The energy of the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's connected to be his aim to premiums, but he's in other words, he's not talking now, for example, if you sat down, you could say, okay, here's teacher and student. So let's let's test them. So the teacher, the student knows all the details. We know that now. But the teacher, of course, the teacher is going to be br more brilliant about the concept in general than the student. That's obvious. But let's talk about how they how that idea reflects in the details. Now, by the teacher, what's reflecting the details is much more of an edelkeit, as he says, a refined, pristine form of it. And by the student, it's much. It's not. Doesn't have the sight quite the same amount of energy. So we're not just talking about the general depth of the concept. We're talking about how much is seen in the details, and how what what dominates. Is it the idea that dominates, or is it the details that dominate, so to speak? We'll all understand this probably better in the nimsha. But let me just finish this. Uh, bottom, end of the day. <laughs> Talk about not on the emic and premiers not on the depth and the inner dimensions of the intelligence, but on on the seichel and the intelligence that is understood and comprehended in the Indian. That by the mespia, by the transmitter, it radiates in the details of ribu air. It's on the kabel in the air, but ribu ilikol kach kmei samespia. And by the recipient, the energy, the energy meaning the energy of the idea, the spirit of the idea. Does not have the same amount, amount, and he uses the word ilui as well, as elevated, as refined, as as much as kolkach, like it is by the mashpia. So kolkach, he's not saying it's infinitely distant. He's just saying it's relative. I heard a word for ilui, ascension. <laughs> yeah, ascension is sometimes, but I don't know if here is the right appropriate word. Aliyah is more okay. This is all the marshal. What's the nimshal? And the example of Dugmim is the example from this Yeshleim, we can say in the union of the ten spheres. Remember, we're talking about how the ten hidden spheres, how the ten revealed spheres emerge from the ten hidden spheres after the Tzimtzum. It's interesting. The Friedrich Rebbe uses the summary of this whole moment for all the Tzimtzum addition. And he doesn't even speak in any chapter about the Simpson Malaysia. Even though he's alluding to it all the time. But that's how Simon said if you said to the Kadev summarizes this minor. Interesting. Okay. So what's the dogma in Swiss? Dini Yesh Kavana Primus Bamaits and Elin Barak will be in the Nasilas Bafla. There's an intention, an internal, an inner kavana, kavana primus. An inner purpose in the Maitzel Elyon Baruch Hu. Remember, we use Maitzel on God when we're talking about Atzilus. We talk Boira, God is creator when we talk about Bria. Yitzel when we talk about Yitzira. So Maitzel, Atzilus, as we talked about, is emanation. It's not a creation, it's an emanation. It's like the scanning that by Yitzel Baruch, the spirit of Moshe Rabbeinu, it was imparted. So the point there is it wasn't created. It's not like he created a container. Like a let's say a, a, an architect or a, a builder could build something, it was imparted from him. It's in a diminished state, but it's an impart, imparted. So we talk about here. We talk about the kavona, the inner kavona, the deeper kavona, the inner purpose of the mitzel elyon baruch of the imparter, the supernal or cosmic imparter. Blessed be he, it's God. in the general uh, emanation, the general. Bringing into being of Atsilis in general, and what he imparted, ten specifically ten. He said emanated, emanated, but emanated, yeah, emanated, yeah, ten and not, ten and not nine and not eleven, like it says in Sefer Yitzir. So he's saying two things: there's a primus de kavana Atsilis in general Atsilis, and the specific breakdown of ten and not. Another number of spheres. What is it? Shall I dare? Silas has spheres that have kabbalah hakavon has this. That specifically, dafke, ten specifically, through the the emanation of the ten spheres, this kavona comes into real is realized. Kabbalah here would be real purpose. Kabbalah kavon has this purpose is realized. We don't know the kavona yet. He said it earlier in the beginning. He said the kavona at Silas and may say is two things. Is in order to create a structured existence that's similar to the divine, so it's like an interface, 
And more importantly, he kept saying it many times, is that Silas comes, but we should be able to know God. There's no way that we human beings could know godliness if you didn't have godliness in some form of structure that's commensurate to us. Huh? Is that saying Vadaka 10 and 11 in the mind? Uh, here, no, that doesn't say in other places. It means that the, the bottom line is because it's that. Remember. Yeah, 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 I understand. He's not going to say here specifically. The bottom line is number one, 10 in general is for there to be structure. So it's not the equal. But the, the, you could always ask, he could have made the structure differently. Yeah. But whatever reason, 10 reflects the structure of, uh, of, of, of the divine. And we, that we'll never understand why that, not something else. But it's clearly that there is a purpose in it. The reason this is relevant is because he's talking here how it's in the Kavona. The 10 hidden spheres is not real spheres. They're only in the purpose, in the, how the, the architect, the Maitzel, is envisioning them. Because this is relevant to the Mashpi and Makabal. We're talking about the energy, you know, or the details. We see the details. But the, but the one who, impart, who, who emanated them, he has a purpose in it. That's the whole point here. So when he sees it from above, from top down, the perspective is a lot different than from the bottom up. But let's let's continue. And I and how would you translate? I and means more than just look. I and means to be eat, be eon, to uh, delve. Delve. I and is more than delve. Also, to be the I and something means to look deeply into it. So I am ashikosim is a. But generally speaking, when you write ayin mashal, for example, in the sikhs, there's the rule. The a means to see. Ayin means to, uh, you have to you have to do a little more exertion. Here, I don't know if the Rebbe Rasha means ayin mashal kosim is ever pardis. In the pardis is the ramak. Shar, there's two, the gate called tam hatzilis, the reason for hatzilis. Bashar shem ben dalad, peder kalif. And the gate called shem ben dalad, which we referred to earlier. Shem ben dalad is yud kevavke, the name of four letters. Peder kalif, chapter one. And another Maran Mokim. Okay, very much okay. So you have to look there to really appreciate, I guess, the reason why the Kavona, the Kavona. Ube Eitz Chaim Shara Kolim. That's part of from the Ramak. Now he's talking about Rizal. Ube Eitz Chaim, in Book of Eitz Chaim, Shara Kolim, the gate of Kolim, the beginning of Eitz Chaim, Kosov. He's right now the reason for creation. Kedei Lehetiv, the Bruav, the Akiru, the Losa, the Yusku, the Yus, the Kovil, the Dobuk, the Yisbol. The, the we always, reason we always mention this one. They always huh? say we always mention this, but we always say the hate of the group. We don't, we don't continue. Yeah, but the Akira Gudlasi does sometimes does say, yeah, but this is the full Russian. Mahati Babriya means to do good, to bestow good to his, the Bru of his creatures. The Akira Gudlasi, and they should recognize his greatness. The Yuskulius, and they should be merit to be Merkova, a chariot, essentially a channel, the Dovik Bayez Barak, to cleave and cling. To God. That's why that's, right. that's an Eitz Chaim Shachol. Now another. He's bringing a whole bunch of sources here for purpose of Atzilus. That's why uh, of Atzilus, or that's why he created the world. No, Atzilus. Atzilus. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. The world is dealing with it's Atzilus. Remember, this is the Quran Atzilus. Yeah. Well, Bishari Gulim Viyesha, and also Eitz Chaim, and the Gate Gulim Viyesha Kosov. Another expression, that he should realize and actualize to bring into actualization Kulais of his functions, Ushmais of his names. God, in other words. And like it's discussed, it's written about this elsewhere. The Kaidim Shinat Salov in his Galo Sphiris. So here we go. So we now know we now know that the Mitzel Elyon in the source there's a purpose, a deeper purpose for Atsilis and the ten spheres. He just brought a few of the reasons that are brought. The Pardis, he doesn't say what the Pardis says, he just says, look there. The Chaim, the first place says these three things to do good to the creatures. They should recognize him and they should become a channel. And in the second place, to actualize. So that's called Galish Lamus Kechesov, sometimes it's a wash. To bring to actualize his potential, which is different. The hut of the Bruv is more focused on the creatures, the first one. This one is more focused on God, that God is actualizing the God. The Ginnish the Maiden Bay is also part of this? That's what that's what this talks about. Ginnish the Maiden Bay is sometimes compared to yeah. 
to to the first one, the Yakir of the Lassa. But it's begin the Shemayin is more Irzal Zechem. The Gim is is all on this. Right. Should know Yakir of the Lassa. Yeah, but Yakir so, so the Yakir is more the Kalim. The Gim is more the Ayev. It, it depends on in in, in later in Ayin Nayim Beis and Ayin Vav at the end of Volume Two he talks about it. And the Rebbe of Kudus Sifra Shemayin is called Vav. Talks about these things, but. I don't want to confuse it because there he talks more about the different kavanah of the Tachtenim or the kavanah from. Here's talking about Atzilus. Let's keep it focused to that. Now, now comes the process. So how did this happen? God, we know, is higher than spheres. It's higher than anything. It's higher than Gili, higher than Eir. But the kavanah in the in, in, in the Maitzel is that there should be oneness. I'm not getting now the questions that we have. What does he need it for? The bottom line is there is a reason for it. For, let's just, you know, for relevant purposes, that's what the, the theme is. Yeah. So how does this come to be? So he says like this. The Kedem Shemit Solovin is Galo Esa Sphiris. Before the ten spheres were emanated and were revealed, see, they never focus, it never says Bri. Mm-hmm. Everything is emerging. This guy you can also say emerging. Right. They were encompassed in the infinite divine light of the emanator of the source, couldn't cause me immersed. I wrote, I say encompassed. I don't immersed because immersed is, sounds encompassed is more correct because they don't really exist. Yet. Yeah, immersed is immersed. more in like you throw an object in water; it's immersed in the water. But it's there, intact. Here, these these spheres don't exist there. They don't say so. Klulim is much more like it's almost it's it's it's. it's it's like, well, there's a lot of levels of Shane. There's lots of Atmos Nesa Kechis or Nefesh Nesa. Nesa, it means you just have, you don't even contain pieces. You just contain the power to do it. Mm-hmm. You know. Then there's Kulul and there's levels. Kulul here means more encompassed. I mean, again, these are semantics, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just know they're not objects. They're not objects. That they're not. We spoke about spheres like yeah, They're not objects. That you open up the closet, they're going to come out. If you break it down, you're going to. Right. Understand. You're not going to find them. If you break up in the mind, you're not going to find the idea. Right, right? exactly. Even, even deeper than that. Exactly. Okay, so including the. Including. The Hena Esther spheres and Ruzis. You know, he's always summing up the, everything he's discussed. And these are the ten hidden spheres. Shein Shoshe Eiris. Remember, there's the roots of the energies. Hakulim be Ense Baruchu, Commission is Baruchu. So the name for this level of how Esther spheres are encompassed. Or contained, you can even say, within the infinite light, that the name for it is Esther Sphere Saglutis. Not to be confused with people who think that Esther Sphere Saglutis, there's 10 spheres like this, 10 spheres like that. No. 10 spheres, 10 spheres is only a name that we're using. Bar the focus is much more on Gnuzes than on Esther Sphere. It's a bar terminology, no? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, it says sometimes even, because uh, there's a lesson there that, um, that, uh, uh, there's a lot of very often yeah. because you can't say you, the air, you need something to say, so you use a word. When you say God is one, sometimes it's the shach. It's amazing. It's not. She eres haklun bein se baruch commission is They are the roots of the energies that are encompassed or contained within the infinite light. As we as we as we as was explained earlier, the yesh behem kavonos hamayts elim baruch hu bein nesesvides, and they contain within them these t- hidden spheres, the kavonos hamayts. So that's their focus. That's like the mashpia. You know, the details are, are, are secondary. Here, what matters is the kavona of the maitzel. This is very similar, if you recall, when we went back to the chapter, was the pshitus. Chapter uh, 21, the beginning of this minor. So he said in the pshitus, how could you call them pshitus mamsh? He says, it's not a suspirus. It's, it's the shir asme bekeach. It's how the architect, the author, is envisioning what he wants later. The vision doesn't have spheres. We're going back here now. So they have the Kavana. The Kran is boiled, and we've already explained. It's been already explained. That the ten spheres, the way they are in this state, within the infinite, bless me, he, infinite, ultimate, utter, utter seamlessness, utter shapelessness, utter lack of definition. They're in a state of non existence. But they exist. That's the thing. right. So we okay. call them a name, but it's the uh, hinkulam kulam yachad, and they're all encompassed, and they're all com- they're all combined together, as we learned. 
Umeir behem kavanus hamatzil. They see all the things of the Moshal are here, and in them radiate the intention of the Maitzil, of the source, of the emanator, the Gili Mamash. Not just Gili. In a very utterly revealed way. All the Lashanas that he used, in an elevated and exalted and awesome state. Mufla, wondrous. And in the parentheses he adds, Oh, he is it. Like we explained earlier in the Marshal, that by that by from the perspective of the Mashpia of the transmitter, Shakulan Basikhli within his Seikhl is encompassed, call up Rotim. All the details. Oh I'm sorry. I have to read like Gamashpia Shakulan Basikhla call up Rotim. By the Mashpia, where in his where in his Seikhl is encompassed all the details, may that's like in Sikhli be Gili Mamad Bapratim. By him, it radiates and shines the inya sichli, the, the 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 overall concept, literally in every detail. Ah, he's adding another thing, especially specifically as the details are united and joined and uh, mixed all as one, which produces a greater sound. Which means he, the, the, the mashpia, sees it even when they're separate, when they're let's say by the by the student, but especially in their root, where they're all all one, where you know they're they're all. Because like I can say the Yud Gimel Midas, you could say in the Yud Gimel Midas he sees a deeper thing, but then there's how they are rooted, where he sees like the the concept that Teira has methodology, and this is the, so the whole thing is on a different level. Where he sees the greater sun, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. By well, see by him, it's the, remember by God, it starts from there and goes down. So you have to think of the Mashpia. They see the greater sun. Before, yeah, 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 before yeah, yeah, yeah. By that Simpson. Oh, and now by the Simpson and through the Simpson, through the concealment, when one sphere, separate, distinct sphere, was transmitted, you cannot say that in the, in this this one sphere does not have the complete purpose and intention of the ten spheres. Going back to the details, it's one detail. Nevertheless, this one sphere has part of it. But it's in a form of diminished energy. Not like the base of Baruch. Right. Right. We'll get to that. We have to that needs a discussion itself. And when all the ten spheres were emanated, and and they have the shlemas, they have the complete kavana, because now you have all the ten spheres. That came from the intention of the emanator. In in, in his intention in Atsilas Asuris, in emanating these ten spheres. Even then, he's talking now the second level. So first there's the first the detail. Then he said, even when you have all the ten, even when the student has all the details, he sets also in a diminished state. So here too. So when they when, when you have all of them, they're still in a diminished energy. Compared to the way they were seamless or formless, shapeless, literally shapeless, when they were encompassed in the source, in Ensei Baruch Hu. The Adi Ba'atzilus Galos, why is that? Because when they were eminent, because through their emanation and their revelation and their emergence, Nasub Chinus Metzias Nikeres Akapana. They became, at minimum, they became. A recognizable, distinct entity. Uh, now he's summing it up. Hamuvan ma'moshel the is base who meet the air haprotish lasfiras beflat. What's understood from the example that letter base is the diminishment of the specific energy of of, of a distinct sphere. That's what we know from there. We'll explain in a moment. In this chapter, what we understand from this example that he gave here, from the details of Seichel, is the diminishment of the intention of the emanator, the source, in, the, in, in, the, in, in, when he, in emanating these spheres. In two lines, he's distinguishing between these two mashallah. Let's let's dissect this a moment. 
I need to read till the end to really get it, but let me just say what I think I understand here. So we know in chapter 26, I'm sorry, 23, he began the example of letters and words. He continued in chapter 24, where with the question, containers, energy, the, the answer is premius energy, premius of air, shameless names. Now he added a new marshal. So in this line here, he says like this. The marshal in chapter, that chapter, earlier chapters of when he took Aceus Bayes. What you know from that is both marshal and he's actually using for the same thing. But each marshal brings out something else. There you know The, 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 he talked about the marshal as being the student. Remember the two, two examples? Two stages. One is the student when he knows the detail. But he doesn't know the entire detail of the rest of the picture. Or even if he knows the rest of the picture, he doesn't really quite get it. Then there's when the student finishes learning and knows it all. It's still diminished. So I think he's saying that now, in a more specific way, that's the difference between the two mashal. The mashal of Ace Bayes only teaches you. The Bayes... It's not Baruch anymore, but it's still a letter in Baruch. So it's like Chachmeh, the emanation of Chachmeh. So Chachmeh is diminished compared to the way it was in its source. The thing is, is it Bayes compared to the word Baruch? Or is it Bayes compared to the Bayes when it was all part of the word Baruch? I'm not sure about that in a second. I'll see. If I move my muscle from the second muscle, well, in this chapter, here we're talking about the general d- diminishment that we don't get the intention as it is in the source. So I think what he's trying to say is that there's two levels of how the spheres are distant, or let's call it diminished, from their source. One is Chochmah, is not quite like the Chochmah necessary segments. Revealed Chochmah, a revealed sphere that is, is a diminished state of the sphere as it was before. But we're not talking about the Kavana right now. It's just diminished energy. Then there's another thing. That another thing is that there's a diminishment that the Kavana, the intention, the Mashpia, even when you have all the S spheres. You know, you could say when you have one, one sphere, okay, that one sphere obviously has within it something, but it doesn't have the whole picture. But now that you have all the ten spheres, but the ten spheres after Atsilas, after the Tzimtzum, they do not have the Kavana quite the same way, the way it is in the source. But the, but there's more here, that there's more, there's definitely more here than the meets the eye. Let, let me just continue. And we're talking everything here is Er Pnimi. Which means, this is very written very densely, very clearly, kids. Yeah, but I think it's, uh, I think it's clear. No, no, what, what's, what's the adding of a call between this Er Pnimi? Not Makif, not Er Pnimi. It's all Esos Fulis. In Atzilus. Okay, let's continue. In Havonis HaSeichel Mechelik, Mechalik, Mechelik Echad. Don't say the Mechelik. No, Mechelik Echad. You know, don't say the Mechelik Echad. Yeah, yeah. The second, the second, now, in Indian, this, and understanding the Sech only from one component, or one part, yeah. you can say that from the way the spirit of Chochma emanated, Kvar Neida Kavana bin Asfir Shiyeh begins Er Pnimi, begins the Shlemud Mbe. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Remember, there's the other side. First, he spoke about the diminishment. So, the diminishment, Chachmeh, is diminished compared to Chachmeh in the hidden spheres, revealed Chachmeh. Secondly, the Kavana, the purpose, is hidden. Mm-hmm. Now he's saying, he's going back to the Moshe. Mm-hmm. Remember, we said that one detail does give you a picture, a part of the whole Seichel. So, he's saying, even when one sphere emanated, you already knew, you already know the, the general Kavana. That the spheres are coming to be air primi. That's what he means by air primi. That's the second to last line. That's what he means. Kol b'chinu se'er primi. Meaning, aha, 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 aha. Let me, let me, let me explain. 
Remember I said that there are things that emanate or things that shine without details. Sunlight. Sunlight shines, it doesn't matter where it shines, it doesn't matter whether the recipient can receive it or not. He said garbage, a palace, everything. Seichel is, break, is made up, as he said, critical and it has components because it has to be comprehended. Once it has components, on one hand, each component is not the whole picture. It's not like seeing a whole picture, it's a piece. On the other hand, however, this piece is part of the puzzle. In this piece, you could see the whole seichel. When you finish, you'll see the whole thing. But this piece is not, you can't say it's not, it's not a concealment, it's a revelation. When Chachma emerged at, from after the Tzimtzum, yes, it's in a concealed state, but it's, but it's a revelation of Chachma, and it tells you something about the Chachma. And it also tells you not just about that there's Chachma in the hidden space, it also tells you about the Kavona El Yene, because it's Er Primi. If it was Er Makif, Er Makif does not, is not made up of details. When Rotsen, when Rotsen the Elyon shines, it makes no difference whether it's Phil or Shabbos or Kashrus. Shekel the Shonda Mitzvah Sivano. I'm not talking about Kavonis and Mitzvahs. I'm not talking about the detail. I'm talking about just you're fulfilling God's will. On Ratzna Elia level, no difference which Mitzvah it is. That's why Alta He Shekel, you shouldn't measure which Mitzvah. Obviously, Mitzvahs also have the detail. We're not talking about that part. Talking Makif, when Makif reigns, uh, when Makif reigns and Makif shines, you don't have this element. So, so, so a detail is not going to tell you. Like, the detail, let's say, of, 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 of Mr. Tzvil, or Tzdoka, or Shabbos, is not going to tell you much about the Ratz all, all it can tell you is that's what God wants. But it's not going to tell you, this Mitzvah is going to tell you what God is like? No. Because it's not about comprehension, it's about doing, it's about fulfilling His will. You know, all the Tayyag Mitzvahs won't even tell you what the Ratz it just tells you this is what He wants, this is the picture. When you learn Seich, when you learn Teirah, you're learning about that Hashem is Hurachim. Just like he's compassionate, you should be compassionate. Yeah, obviously he's much more than Rachim, and he's much more than all the Esther spheres, and he's much deeper Kavanas. But you know, you learned something. You learned something about God. You learned that God, because it's, it's about comprehension. It's Er Pnimi. Er Pnimi reflects on something. Er Pnimi is not just, this is a very vital section here, because this is the interface. If there was only Er Pnimi, means that there's some relationship between an Er and a Kali. Or there's a relationship. Chachma is a specific thing. So when Chachma, when, when, that's why when you understand Chachma, you, you know what Chachma, but you also know the Kavon El Yena, that he wants that there should be Er Pnimi, or else he wouldn't have emanated Chachma. Then it would have just been Ratznel, and then God should have created a world, and there'd be no details. That's only one mashal, not the first mashal, the base. Yeah, this, this is not, mashal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parts of the, of the Seher. yeah. Not the ACC. We need to analyze this deeper because what, what he's doing with all these Mashalim, but, okay. So we know, you see, here he brings Begin this time, wouldn't they? Which is the way. The Loshan Hazayar, whatever, on the Eitz right. Chaim, Yakiru, the Loshan Hazayar. Begin this time means in order, begin means in order, uh, in means a cause of. The Shtamudin Bey, that he should be known. It's a, it's a strange Loshan, the Shtamudin Bey, that he should be known, Bey. The wooden bay. He should be known through it, yeah. through what, through Atzilus or through, through existence, through his handiwork. Through yeah, mm -hmm. right. So they should be known, which of course begs many questions. Why does he have to be known, and who know, who's going to know him? And right. if he didn't exist, there was no one to know. Him. That's what this is. Uh, yeah, but anyway, but you know the kavanah she becomes er pnimi. Gam kameshis. I think there's no question. This was added later. Gam kameshis bar the common, and also. Like we'll explain later, the Ba'atzilus Chachma Bina, that from the emanation of Chachma and Bina, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, who should ye See, this is ah, this is the purpose of Atzilus that I mentioned. That the Atzilus said that there should be a comprehension of the divine, of godliness in the world. Vafila midus who should ye had gishus, had a gishus alakus. That's interesting. Doesn't say had had a gishus. Sensitivity. Hargishus alakus. It's not the same thing as hargosha. No. Hargishus is like emotional. Right. Very, very misagish. Is misagish. He's like a very excited, a very he's excitable. He's sensitive about the godliness. Okay. I feel amidus of atzilus is also that there should be a a feeling, a sensation, a a a a a, 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 a stimulation. Grace. Hargishus alakus, a sensation of godliness. For I am ashikos of our beard of a hundred. Behenif. And, and, and I delve into the beer in, in the explanation of Behenif. 
which is on Pasha Emet. Maybe, or maybe the Hennifus Emet. I think so. Isn't there also the Hennifus Emet? Yeah, uh, it's enough for Emet. Um, okay, I'm not sure. We have to look that up. The Biskalos has spheres made by him, Chins and Sof Shlemus of the Kula. That when all the spheres are interconnected, it radiates in them the divine light that that the that is the Muslim call that reflects how the completion, the perfection, the, the, the wholesomeness, the all encompassing nature of the divine light. It's only basically the spirit, so yeah. that it's not the main. You can say that this is for them to in order for them to have the revelation the way it is in the root of the energies. And in the root, he is his mayor. Okay, this needs more explanation, which I will do in the coming classes. But basically, he added an example. We'll stop here. The piano will do a little bit. He added an example, the example of understanding Seichel through details. And we have to understand, obviously, what this example adds. But briefly, because the Cheda, this if you only had this example, you also have both elements. You also have the diminishing of the detail. The question is, what do you need the first example? That's the question. That's what the uh, he's trying to explain the last two no. lines. No, but what do you need the first one? No, that's he's trying to explain. No, 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 but, the, the, but what he explained for the first one, you could say also in the second one. I understand why you need the second muscle. That's very clear. But the question is why you need the first one. It's not so clear. We have to, we have to and it's zero. Fine. This is called study. But I'm, 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 I'm excited to not know. And we have to figure it out. For sure, it adds. It adds. The container element, that's what I think he wants to say. But he doesn't, he's not satisfied that it's just the container's aces. I don't want to speculate right now. I have to, I have to think this through. Let's just finish. I'm just learning chat now. But bottom line is, he gave this new example. This new example teaches us all the details. That the kavona, the mashpia here in the, in the marshal the example, the nimshal is the kavona of the mites of Ali. He has the whole picture. His intention not to us. And the details of all that Sphiris he sees from that perspective in a very refined, dacus way that the after the Tsimson, which is the Makabal, cannot see. Now begins the actual process. So now you have one sphere comes out. That one sphere is diminished from the way it is in its root, that's for sure. Number one is diminished simply because Chochma is lower than the Chochma in the hidden sphere. Number two, it only has a detail. It doesn't tell you about the whole picture. That's initially. But it has a rav more than when the recipient gets it. Like the no, no, I'm talking now from the, I'm talking now the macabre, not the, I'm talking about the recipient now. I'm talking about the results. I'm talking about the results. No, 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 that we know is fine. Now we're talking about the recipient. Is Now now we have the recipient. The chachma is emerged after the symptom. We're talking about after, it's after the symptom is immediately the recipient. So chachma is the diminished state from the way it is. Doesn't have the shlemus of kavanah because it only has one sphere, but nevertheless, it does have something from from the higher from the higher purpose. And even when all ten of them emerge, it's still needed because it still doesn't have that 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 extra touch that the teacher has. Okay. And then he distinguishes between the two mishal. But but before he goes to the distinction, buddy, but. In some way, it does tell you that there is a higher kavana, a premius. He wants us, Atzilus, he wants us to know him, and feel him. And it does give you, even the spheres after the, 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 the tzimtzum, the real, give you some sense of what's going on in the root of the energies in a diminished way. So you can say, In other words, he wants... You could see from the fact that he emanated spheres, he wants us to know that there are the root of energies. He's adding another point here. That there's a higher place. That, yeah, that there's a place that, that, there, that there's something higher that, that he wants us to be aware of that. 
In other words, the, the revealed spheres are actually telling us no, that there are hidden spheres. Hold on, hold on. But then he adds here the two things that the is base teaches us about the diminishment in the detail. Not really so clear what it is. And the, and the second is that the diminishing of the general kavana. The, the question is, the second muscle also touches with the diminishment of the specific detail. There must be something in the letters. Now, the sugi is not finished. It keeps on going. So I am sure there's going to be a lot more action. Uh, but let's stop here. So we did today chapter, well, most of chapter 25 until the conclusion of the Maimon, pages 38 through top of 40.